Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this series we're creating Spider-Man in Unity 2D. In this video we're going to add the ability to shoot webs as projectiles. Let's begin. Okay, so this is the scene so far. I have Spider-Man walking around, there are enemies being spawned, and I can kick and punch them, and after some hits they go flying away. And also by hitting space I can do a web zip to move around the map very quickly. So I can do, attack them, and so on. Okay, great. So now let's add another web-based ability. We're going to shoot some webs as projectiles that we can later use to web up and deal damage to enemies. So here in the editor, let's begin by making a prefab that we're going to instantiate. So in here, let's begin by making an empty game object. This will be the web projectile. And I'm going to add a sprite render component and add the web projectile sprite. So there it is, that's the sprite. So let's make it into a prefab by making a new prefab and we're going to call it PF Web Projectile. We're going to use the physics system to detect collisions. So in here, let's add a box collider 2D and also a rigid body 2D. We're going to move our projectile by modifying the transform instead of using add force. So in here on the rigid body, on the body type, instead of being dynamic, let's set it to kinematic. All right, so that's the setup required to have physics working on this object. So now let's do a script to control this. So make a new C# -sharp script and we're going to name this the web projectile. So first, let's just do a very simple movement. Let's define a private const float for the speed of this projectile. Let's give it a small amount so we can see it visually moving. We're going to have a private vector 3 for the direction that this projectile will be headed towards. Let's make a private void setup function, and in this setup function, we're going to receive the direction. So on the private void awake, let's call that setup. And give it a vector 3, just moving to the right, so 1, 0. Okay, that's the direction. And now on our private void update, we're going to move the transform towards that direction. So transform.position. Increase the position by direction multiplied by speed multiplied by time dot delta time. Okay, so let's see the code in action and we should have this projectile moving towards the direction which is to the right. Yep, there's a projectile as you can see it is moving to the right. Okay, so now that the projectile movement is working we want to look for a collision. So for that I'm going to create a very simple wall. So in here create an empty game object. This will be my wall. I'm going to add a sprite render component and drag a white pixel. This way I can see a visual square. Okay, like that and make it look like a wall. Now add the box collider component and make this a trigger. Now we can go back into the projectile code. And in here, in order to test for collisions, we're going to use the private void on trigger enter 2D. This function is called when this box collider hits another physics object with the trigger set to true. So in here, when we do hit something, let's simply just destroy this projectile. So do a very simple destroy this game object. Okay, so let's test and see if the projectile does vanish when it hits the wall. There's a projectile moving slowly to the right and when he gets there, yep, he vanishes, great. So we now have collisions fully working. So with that, let's make a create function to be able to easily spawn projectiles. So let's go all the way up here and make a public static web projectile. And we're going to call it a create. This one will instantiate various projectiles. For the arguments, let's receive a vector3 for the position that we want to spawn the projectile at and a vector3 for the direction that we want it to move towards. So in here, we want to instantiate and we need a reference for the prefab to instantiate. So for that, I'm going to go into the game assets class that we've been using. If you haven't seen this, this is a very simple class that has an instance in our scene. So using the static instance, we can easily access these references. So in here, I'm going to add another field for the Spider-Man web projectile. And back into my projectile. And here I can instantiate going into the game assets dot instance and grab the web projectile. I'm going to instantiate him in the position and with a quaternion.identity. So this returns a transform for the web projectile transform. Then I go into the transform, get the component of type web projectile, and that returns the web projectile. Then we call this setup to set the direction. We give it the direction and we return this web projectile. Okay. 
So we now have a nice, easy, simple static function to create various projectiles. So in order to test this, let's go into the game handler. And over here on start, let's just fire projectiles all over the place. So in here, make a function periodic, which again is part of the CodeMonkey utilities that you can grab for free from unitycodemonkey.com. And I'm going to create a function periodic, which triggers a certain action every certain amount of time. So let's say every 50 milliseconds, we are going to trigger this action. And in this action, we're going to go into the web projectile and instantiate a new projectile. Let's start from the spiderman.get position and let's give it a random direction. So we use utils class to get a random direction. Okay, so every 50 milliseconds, we should be firing a projectile in a random direction. Let's see. And yep, there they are, projectiles going in every direction, and whenever one hits the wall, they vanish, all the others keep going. Okay, so now as you can see, the rotation is incorrect, so let's fix that. Over here on the setup, let's rotate the transform. So I'm going to do the transform.euler angles and modify the euler angles, give it a zero, zero on the X and Y, and now on the Z, go into the utils class and get the angle from vector of this direction, okay? And yep, the rotation is now correct and you got webs being shot all over the place. And again, when they hit the wall, they all vanish correctly. Now, if we pause the game, we can see that there's a massive amount of projectiles firing all over. There you go. And yep, there they are. And if we go down in the hierarchy, yep, you can see a mountain of projectiles. Essentially, if they don't hit a wall, they keep going on forever. Obviously, we don't want objects to live forever. So let's go back into the code. So in here, let's add a maximum distance. This can be variable, but for now, let's set it up as a constant. So constant float for the distance traveled max. And let's say a maximum, I want them to travel 100 units. Then we have a private float for the distance travel. And on our update, let's simply increase the distance traveled by the speed times time dot delta time. So this is how much he, this object has traveled. So if the distance travel, if it is bigger than the distance traveled max, then essentially the projectile has traveled too much destroy. So I'm going to destroy this game object. Okay, so that's pretty simple. Let's test and see if they now destroy after some time. Okay, there they are. They are being spawned. They are going and yep, there you go. There's about 100 units from there to there. And when they get there, yep, they vanish. And now we can pause and check out the hierarchy and we no longer have objects all over the place. Okay, great. So now let's make them spawn manually from Spider-Man. So let's head into the Spider-Man class. In here on the normal, let's add another function for the handle shoot web projectile. So let's go down here and make that function. Now in here, let's test for an input. So in here, I'm going to test for get key down of code dot let's say f so when we press f we want to fire a web projectile now we want to fire it towards the mouse so let's call it a vector 3 for the projectile deer which will be the utils class to get the mouse position minus this position and normalize the whole thing so using that we can simply go into the web projectile class and create a new web projectile spawning from this get position and towards the projectile direction. Okay, so let's go back in here and comment out this code and see if we can manually spawn webs. Okay, here I am, everything works the same. I can move, I can punch and kick, okay. And I can also web zip. And if I click half, yep, there you go, he's firing one projectile. Now obviously we need to change the speed of the projectile, but yep, they are being spawned from there. Now in here, when we are shooting the projectile, let's also play an animation. So I'm going to go into the Spider-Man base class and play the shoot web animation. I'm going to play towards the projectile direction. When it completes, it will fire this action. Okay. So in here, before we play the animation, let's modify the state. So let's add another state and the state will be shooting web projectile. So this is what we want to set in here. When we play the animation, set the state equal state dot shooting web projectile. When the animation is complete, let's set the state back to normal. So now let's go up here into the update. And in case we are on state shooting web projectile, if we are, then let's handle shooting more projectiles. 
So essentially, whilst we're shooting a projectile, we cannot move, but we can shoot more projectiles. So let's see if the animation is playing. Okay, so here I am moving around. If I press F, yep, there you go, he's firing projectiles. And the projectiles vanish when they hit the wall or after reaching a certain distance. So in here I can move around, I can still web zip, I can still attack, everything still works, and firing projectiles all over the place. Okay, great. So now that we have our projectiles working, let's add a particle on the floor when they get destroyed. So for that we're going to keep our code clean and the logic separated from the extra effects. So with that in mind, let's use some events. So in here on the web projectile, let's make a public static event, an event handler event, and we're going to call this on web reach max distance. So this will be fired when the web reaches the max distance. Then let's also have another event for the on web hit object in case we want different behavior. So now it's very simple to fire these events. So in here, when the projectile is traveling too much, if the event does have subscribers, so it's not null, then let's fire the event using this and event args.empty, okay? And let's fire this actually before we destroy the game object, just in case whoever captures this event wants to get the position from this object. And let's do the same thing on a collision. Just like that, okay. So using that, we can now make another class to capture these events. So in here, let's make a new C-sharp script. This will be the web for particles. Now this will be a very simple class. So remove all this, the modern behavior, and make it a static class since we don't want to instantiate this. Let's make it have a public static void init function to initialize this class. And in here, essentially, we're going to go into the web projectile and capture those events. So capture this event and the other one as well. So when these events are triggered, let's spawn a web particle. Over here, I have a web on the floor. There you go, just like that. That's a simple sprite. So let's make this into a prefab that we can instantiate. Make it a prefab, the PF web floor. Again, do the same thing and add the web floor into our game assets. And then we can simply go back into the web floor particles. And here, let's use that to instantiate a new web floor particle. So use object.instantiate. We're going to instantiate into game assets.instance and grab the prefab for the web on the floor. And now for the position that I'm going to spawn, I need to capture the sender. So the sender is a web projectile. So web projectile equals sender as a web projectile. We could also obviously have a custom event arguments, but this works and it's pretty simple. So using the web projectile, grab the transform.position and again, quaternion.identity and just like that. So just like that, we are spawning this prefab into the web projectile position whenever this event is fired. So let's do the exact same thing for this other event and just like that. So all that's left is in the game handler. And here on our wake, let's go into the web floor particles and initialize that class. So this one calls init and this one subscribes to those events and when those events are triggered, he instantiates this sprite. Okay, so let's see. Okay, here I am and if I press F, there goes a particle and yep, it gets there and it changes into a nice sprite that shows a projectile went there and it stopped on the floor. And again, I can also hit a wall and I can spam to hit the wall and just like that. Now we could have a different sprite for when hitting a wall versus when hitting the floor, but you know, that's just polish. So let's just see, and yep, exactly, everything is firing, and we can still web zip around the map, and we can still punch and kick. So there you have it, we added the ability for our Spider-Man to shoot web projectiles. We made those webs go in a straight line and added collision detection to stop when hitting a wall. In the next video, we're going to fire webs towards the enemies and web them up and cause damage. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.